Well, this is it. Aside from John Delancey guest starring in the premiere, this was the other big event that most fans were anticipating going into Season 2. The return of Luna. And it's not hard to understand why. I mean, back when she was introduced in the first episode, she was a good character who'd turned evil and would later be redeemed. She had a relatively complex backstory, and her very existence was heavily tied into the world's history and culture. Combine that with her being separated from the world for a thousand years, and before we even saw her, she was already the most interesting character on the show, with the most potential for character development. And indeed, Lauren Faust has already stated that she originally wanted to have many more episodes featuring Luna back in Season 1, but the attitude from Hasbro at the time was that she started as a bad guy and she represented darkness in the night, so she was labeled too scary for the show's younger viewers. Now keep in mind, this is what she looked like the last time we saw her. This is what they said was too scary for kids. This, according to Hasbro, was so pants-shittingly frightening that DHX Media had to wait a whole year to reintroduce her in a Halloween episode. So let's see how they did. As the episode begins, Pony Ponyville is celebrating Nightmare Night, but rather than just being a shameless Halloween clone, it turns out that Nightmare Night is actually tied into the legend of Nightmare Moon. The story for this holiday is that every year, Nightmare Moon passes by looking for ponies to eat. So everyone wears costumes to disguise themselves, and after trick-or-treating, the children offer some of their candy as tribute to satisfy your appetite. This is all explained for the benefit of a young boy named Pipsqueak who just moved from Trottingham and is celebrating his very first Nightmare Night. Not only does this story add context to the holiday itself, but it also adds a lot of weight to the scenes that follow when Luna shows up. Now, clearly the holiday was thought up sometime after Luna was imprisoned in the moon, and we're never told exactly how much she knows about it. That also implies the possibility that her Pegasus guards aren't just wearing costumes, but have actual bat wings for some reason. Nonetheless, Luna makes a grand entrance, and in a booming loud voice that no one expected, states that she intends to turn the festival into a truly glorious celebration. And all of her enthusiasm immediately hits a brick wall when she sees that, rather than being happy, all of her subjects look terrified of her. Now, this could be a case of poor timing, since on this particular night she represents the living embodiment of the Boogeyman, or it could be the location, since this is the same town that she showed up in as Nightmare Moon with the intention of taking over the world, but then again, everyone was celebrating when she turned back to normal, so we have to assume they forgave her. It could just be that she's royalty, and let's face it, they're just as terrified of Celestia whenever she visits. Unfortunately, Luna is much more sensitive than her sister, and she still believes that no one likes her. And throughout the entire town, and Twilight is the only one who seems to realize that Luna's feelings are being hurt and goes to talk to her. After establishing that there are no hard feelings after their last encounter, Twilight shows Luna around town while giving her advice on how to fit in better. Any progress Luna makes is usually spoiled, however, when Pinkie Pie, who's out collecting candy with the children, shows up and starts freaking out, sending the children into a panic as well. The irritating part is that this usually happens when Luna is doing something good, like saving Pip's life after he falls into a tub of water and almost drowns. I mean, she finally gets to enjoy a party for the first time in her unimaginably long life, then steps it up by becoming an actual full-fledged hero, and she's rewarded with Pinkie Pie completely ruining the moment, followed by Pip himself screaming that she's trying to eat his butt. Which, by the way, coming from Princess Luna, that's a special privilege that money can't buy. What can I say, these ponies do enjoy a good tossed salad. Still, the previously good mood has now become uneasy, and Luna's attempts to correct the situation all backfire so disastrously that the only way she can put a stop to the ensuing chaos is, ironically, by scaring the shit out of everyone even more, and then banning Nightmare Night forever. Meanwhile, Twilight's had enough too. She sets the James Woods trap and lures Pinky into a secluded alleyway where Luna takes care of her personally. Actually, despite Luna having every right to be furious right now, she really just wants to make peace so that Pinky will stop working everyone into a riot whenever she's around. This moment is interrupted by Rainbow Dash, who's been using a storm cloud to play pranks all night. And while this is a bit counterproductive at the moment, I have to admit it's pretty poetic to have Rainbow Dash pranking Luna while wearing a shadow bolt costume. Pinky runs away scared, but Twilight stops her, and here we finally find out that Pinky was really just playing all along because being scared is actually a big part of what's fun about Nightmare Night. In Pinky's defense, she really wasn't trying to be an asshole, she just was by accident. But this gives Twilight a new idea as Luna starts playing along with the Nightmare Moon persona and is beyond surprised to learn that most of the others, like Pinkie Pie, were also just having a good time and getting into the spirit of the holiday. And in the end, Luna allows Nightmare Night to continue after Pip asks her to come back for more scary butt fun. 
Great, we finally established that Luna isn't too scary for kids, and now she's legally required to stay 200 feet away from them at all times. Damn it, Pip, this is why no one likes you. Ultimately, though, this was a very surprising episode. Luna still managed to be more of a fully developed, three-dimensional character than anyone else on the show, and no one expected her to be as outspoken and authoritative as she was. And at the same time, it was also very interesting to see that in a lot of ways, Luna was basically the opposite of Twilight. Twilight originally had no interest in making friends, but for the most part, she's actually able to adapt to social situations very well. Luna, on the other hand, wants nothing more than for others to like her, but she has no idea how to make that happen. She's very socially awkward. And that leads to my next point, that this episode has one of the best lessons at the end. In fact, it feels like this should be the ultimate lesson for the entire series, which is once you've learned how to make friends, pass that knowledge on. If you know someone who wants to be more social and they're clearly struggling, help them out a bit. And you'll notice, this isn't accomplished with a quick pep talk or by reading a self-help book. It's actually kind of funny. You'd think with Twilight, most of her answers would be in a book, but no. She helps Luna be more social by taking her around to different places and working with her so she can practice being social. We also got a new character with Pip, and despite all the tasteless jokes I made at his expense earlier, I actually think he's a really good character. And besides all that, this episode was just fun. And like Halloween in real life, half the fun comes from looking at all the costumes everyone has. But if I have anything to criticize, it's that no one besides Twilight tries talking to Luna. No one gives a crap that she's clearly uncomfortable with the way that everyone's treating her or that she might not even realize what's going on. And I kind of expect that from the background characters, but what about the other main five? Okay, Rainbow Dash is kind of self-centered anyway, Fluttershy gets scared easily, and Rarity's seen how to be cut for time, but why couldn't Applejack figure this out before Twilight told her to be nice? And Pinkie Pie's only goal was for everyone to have fun, and yet she didn't realize that Luna, who was the butt of all of her jokes, was the only one not having fun? In fact, Pinkie comes off looking especially mean for most of the episode, even if it's unintentional, and I really didn't enjoy that. It's a relatively small but still important problem in what's otherwise a fantastic episode. Luna Eclipsed gets a 9 out of 10, and I really hope the princess gets more attention in Season 3.